So the next step that we have is going to is called safety and control. The two basic needs for every negotiation doesn't matter if it's adult or children is safety and control, or what we call in the child literature is agency. A no is often a protection to give a safe space uh, and give the other person or the, the child that you're speaking to a feeling of control. Um, so if I ask my son, is now a bad time to talk? Inviting, like this is now a bad time to talk. Inviting this no response early um, and getting them to say, no, 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 no now's a good time to talk. It, it, like when they start thinking about that, like when they give a yes, um, or they could say like, no, now's not a good time. So you find a better time to talk. Uh, and if they say yes, you have their complete focus, which is amazing. Saying, oh, I love this. Uh, Freddie is saying nothing is forced. Exactly. Exactly. Like we're not pushing uh, kids into one response, right? We don't want to force them into one response. We, we want to get that, that choice because if they don't have agency, then they don't really have choice. And in fact, saying yes is one of the most dangerous things because it gives us very little information. And what do you mean by that? Well, Chris explains it. Chris Voss in his book, Never Split the Difference, says it this way. Um, is this yes one of three C's? Is it counterfeit? That's a false yes. Is it confirming? Just, oh, they're just saying yes to go. Yeah, like I, I confirm that I understand. Or is it convinced? Because only the convinced are going to take action. Counterfeit and confirming are both no's in disguise. So they're saying yes, but they really mean no. And this is a problem. We see this all the time. The kids are like, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Right? It's definitely a, probably a confirming yeah. Yeah. They're not going to do what you say. Right? That's a problem. Uh, people will say a counterfeit yes, just to uphold our parents' ego, right? But it must be convinced. It must be a convinced yes from them if you want to see a change in their action. So another thing to look out for. So how do I know that I'm, I'm doing this wrong? Well, if somebody goes and says, oh, you're a, you're a great negotiator or you're a, a, like a great parent, then you failed the negotiation because they should be congratulating themselves if we want to see action on their part. We often think like, oh yeah, we feel great about that, right? Like, oh, they said like, oh, I, I love my parents or you're great at this. Mm, that's, that's about you. That's not about them. That doesn't mean that they're going to change. Or what if your child says, you're right, you're right. That's another indicator that you're getting a counterfeit or a confirming yes, because they're saying you're right. Doesn't mean I agree with you, right? Um, another counterfeit yes it, that you might hear from your kids is I'll try. I'll try. I'll try is a way of making a plan for failure. So what can we do in this situation? Well. One thing we can do is remember the TSM four, the M stands for mirror, mirror with I'll try. What do you mean? I'll try and give them uh, time to respond. And so maybe they'll change it to you no, know, like, this is like, I'm actually going to put like serious effort here. I don't know if I can do it. I'm missing something. Okay. Now we're in a different uh, mode of conversation. That is great. That is exactly what you want, but make sure that it's a confirming, like this is, this is something that they're convinced that this is going to be beneficial for them. Uh, because if it is just confirming or if it's like a counterfeit, uh, yes, we have a problem. And so that's why yes is a very tricky thing. And people, instead of trying to move towards yes, moving towards no gives them that feeling of uh, control that nothing is forced. They give them the opportunity to say no. Now, let's go back to no. No response is often changes the conversation. So great negotiators tend to drive to the first no 
in because it gives the other person a sense of control and it gives them the opportunity to articulate what they really want. Um, if our biggest fear as parents is to not hear a no from our child, we cannot be good negotiators because we are hostage to getting a yes from them. We're hostage to, you must say yes to me. You must agree with what we're doing or what I've told you to do. Uh, in fact, uh, they've even tried this in practice. Like if you, if you had like a, a, they had a charity funding um, in the book and they said like they, they tried no questions, they tried yes questions. And the no focus um, charity questions uh, in, in the fundraising script, it produced 28% more results than a yes focused one. So it's produced significantly more results by giving people that choice, that ability to say no. No questions uh, can take many forms and, and they tend to be uh, very powerful. So if you ask questions that are leading towards a no, um, it's very powerful. So for example, asking, have you given up on this? Uh, for example, have you given up on getting your black belt? It forces your child to come up with reasons why they have not given up. When this is someone else's kid who doesn't know you, you could say, hey, Everett, thank you for your energy today. Listen, Everett, you're probably going to hate me for this. We're playing the cleanup game. You want to sit quietly or and wait, or can we get your help? Interesting, huh? So it acknowledges their name. It gives them an opportunity to say, you're probably going to hate me for this. So it gives them an opportunity to say, no, I don't like you. <laughs> so it gives them the no right away. And then it gives them some choices. And from what I'm reading also in the parenting books, like that, that kind of giving them some choices, but both of them are okay. Like one of them could be just, you know, sit quietly on the side so that I can actually do the cleanup. Uh, and then the other is help with the cleanup. Um, it still gives them that choice, that agency, uh, and leads them in the right direction without forcing them, like you must do something. Um, and so it, it points to what Freddie was saying, like nothing here is forced. And so what kind of outcome are we looking for in any negotiation to know that we have established safety and control? Like they feel like they feel safe to talk about what they're talking about and they also feel in control. So we're looking for phrases like, that's right, or exactly. Um, these are the outcomes that we should strive for more than yes, because it means that we have successfully summarized and labeled their emotions. Uh, this allows us to go to the black swan events, um, which I'll talk about in more detail later, but here's an example. Understanding why they need um, something right now or why a child doesn't want to share a toy. Maybe last time they shared a toy, they had a really bad experience. So you need to understand that bad experience uh, in order to be able to continue the negotiation. And so that's why it's so important to, to get to exactly, that's right, that's what you're looking for. So I, I love that. Um, and also, I hope this is making sense, but the types of questions that we ask have a big impact. And when we use, like, you know, like there's the W5, um, when we use, where, who, and why, these tend to lead to accusations. Where did you get that candy? Who ate all the cookies? Why did you leave Lego on the floor? Those are really strong <laughs> accusations. How's your kid going to feel if you ask those types of questions with where, who, and why? So instead, focus on the what and the how. Focus on what and how, right? What and how questions uh, tend to require more thinking to respond, which leads you towards the direction that you want to go. Um, two excellent questions that I loved 
absolutely loved from the book was one, how am I going to, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to play with you when our floor is covered with hard toys? How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> it's very powerful. How am I uh, supposed to do that? Right? Very, very powerful. The second one is, what does having this do for you? So another, uh, another favorite that I love. What do you plan to do after we watch this episode? It's, it's work to get my kids to come up with their own homework plan that they'll do right after uh, they finish this episode. Um, so it's not me. I'm not coming up with the plan. It's like, well, what's going to happen after you watch this episode? And so, again, as, as a theme, safety and control. And control is what they're after, right? And if you don't provide safety and control, like we, we don't really have a, a, like a control. So you've got the, the goal, name of the game. <laughs> the name of the game is getting them first at a base of safety, feeling safe and feeling in control of the conversation. Um, they can control where, what happens next. They can control, okay, yes, I am going to do homework, but I'm going to do this homework. I don't want to do any page. I just want to do this particular page. Okay, great. Let's do that. Give them that uh, feeling of control. Now, that's not the same thing as giving them full control, but giving them that feeling of agency is so important. Uh, and feeling safe, like I can say no and it's okay. That's hard, um, I, I admit. It's not easy to, to have that feeling of safety, but it is very, very important. So I hope that one's making sense. That one is uh, like, and how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to give you what you want when you have no clothes to wear in the morning uh, and I need to get all these clothes washed? Oh, I love it. It's like, well, you know, if you had done something that would help, you know, with uh, folding the clothes, it would have solved all these problems. And it would be easy for me. I would love to do these things. Um, very different conversation. Very different conversation. Uh, 